As Catholics, we all know the power of intercession when it comes to the saints. When I lose something, I pray to St. Anthony. When I find myself in an impossible situation, I pray to St. Jude, etc., etc. We go to the saints to intercede for us with God. That is part of our belief in the communion of saints. But there's also another piece to that idea of intercession that we often forget about, and that's the role that we play, that we are called to intercede for one another, to pray not just when someone gets a bad doctor's diagnosis or a job is lost or a marriage is on the rocks, but to pray day in and day out for the people we love, the people we work with, the people we're not so crazy about, the people we disagree with, and even as Jesus reminds us, to pray for our enemies. The power of intercession is a power God has given to us as part of our call as the communion of saints through baptism to intercede for one another, to beseech the Lord for those we love and care about, and even those we find it very hard to love and care about. But that's something we often forget to do, to intercede for people rather than to attack them, to intercede and to go to God for people when they're in error or have made a bad decision in their life, rather than to judge, to condemn, and to talk about them. You know, anytime you're on social media, it's very sad, but in our country right now, there's such division and there's such a tendency that if I disagree with you, or if I hold a different opinion than you, I have to attack you. I have to tear you down. I have to destroy you. That's not a Christian attitude. There are people out there we're gonna disagree with. There are people out there who might be in error. There are people out there who might be wrong. But that's where we need to use that power of intercession to pray for them to God, rather than to attack, belittle, or to judge them on social media. As we all know, that social media attack doesn't get us very far. It just entrenches people further in their way of thinking. But to pray for someone, to intercede for them with the Lord, can reap benefits beyond our wildest imagination. Now, I can remember in elementary school, the sisters used to always remind us to pray for the conversion of sinners. And as a kid, I had this image of people in prison on death row, or people who were Satanists, who were so far from God. But I realized that to pray for the conversion of sinners begins first praying for my own conversion, praying for the conversion of those around me, praying for the conversion of the people I don't know, the people who don't know God, etc., etc. As baptized people called to one day, God willing, find our place in the communion of saints, we need to practice that here by interceding for others, not only for our loved ones, for those in distress who are sick, but let's also do something much more productive in our cancel culture of attacking people. And instead of typing something or posting something or attacking someone on social media, why not turn to the Lord in prayer? that they can have that change of heart, that they can see things in a different way, that maybe God can touch them and change them. And let us also pray for that same conversion and touching of our own hearts in those areas of our lives where we've become close-minded, where we've fallen into the darkness of error, or we have turned away from God. We all, saint and sinner, have been given an ability by God and a gift by God to intercede for one another, Let's start using that gift here on earth by taking our place and our role in the communion of saints so that through our prayers, God can reap and bring untold blessings to those we love, those we care about, and even those we'll never meet. That's the power of intercession. Let's start using that superpower God has given to us more effectively and more frequently in our lives.